Some of the best moments in the Hitman games are found when simply messing with the random people you can find in a mission and abusing their, let's just say, questionable intelligence levels. But what if we took all of that away and turned these random idiots into super geniuses who can hear and see me from a mile away and are suspicious of absolutely everything? I'm going to find out if it's even possible to beat a Hitman level without these super sleuths figuring out something has gone wrong. And I know the perfect place to do it. Miami, Florida. Why is Miami perfect, do you ask? Because I forgot to mention one thing. I also installed a mod that gave all of these geniuses guns, because they are free Americans, and they will shoot me the second they see me do anything even remotely suspicious. My target here is a race car driver named Sierra Knox, along with her father, Robert Knox. Sierra is hot-headed and is competing in a race that's taking place in the very center of the map. Robert, on the other hand, is more mild-mannered and resides in a tech development lab that overlooks the raceway. To complete the mission like this, I have to kill both targets, but because of how smart the NPCs are, I also have to make it my goal to never be caught, since it's pretty much an instant death sentence every time I do, with innocent crowds turning into well-trained firing squads the second I do something wrong. I decided to start by exploring the map to see where I can even access with these guards roaming the map. The main entrance was completely covered by a camera, so there was no way of getting in through legal means, and using the side entrance to sneak past was quickly made impossible by these three human sentry turrets guarding the area. The instant I enter somewhere I shouldn't be, everybody nearby will instantly have their spidey senses activate and turn to stare at where I'm hiding. I couldn't just silently knock them out either, because the second someone is knocked unconscious, a nearby person will come investigate the noise, ensuring I get caught unless I can instantly hide the body somehow. But my chances of hiding the body in time are practically zero unless the person is really separated from a group and standing next to a container. So that's out of the question for now. Since I was only allowed to smuggle one item with me, I needed to scour the map for useful items and discovered some really important tools, most notably coins and poison. I also came to the conclusion that Sierra would likely be the easier of the two targets. Not only is she vulnerable while racing, she also wanders the map constantly after the race concludes, hopefully giving me ample opportunity to create an accident if I so choose. Well, at least that's what I thought at first. After tailing Sierra once the race concluded, I found that she's even harder to eliminate than Robert, as she's constantly tailed by this woman, who is suspicious of me despite the security outfit I managed to find in an underground parking garage. Normally, that wouldn't be a problem. I would usually just distract the other person and take out Sierra to stash her before anyone sees, but these guys are absolutely elite. The second I so much as thought about doing that, this guy spotted me and executed me on the spot, so I had to completely restart. To make matters worse, Sierra is always in a crowded area. Whether it's walking the red carpet, chatting at a bar, or talking to her crew, she is never without at least three or four people around her. This means the only way for me to kill Sierra is during the race, which isn't going to be much easier. Since guards will always investigate whenever I knock someone out, getting unique disguises is a next to impossible task, so I can't sneak into the pit stop and mess around with her car, and I can't use a unique disguise to lure her out of her usual cycle either. So how is it even possible to kill Sierra? Well, before we get to that, I'd like to talk about today's sponsor, FlexiSpot. FlexiSpot makes high quality standing desks to fit any of your daily needs. They come in a wide variety of different colors and sizes for any of your specific preferences. Personally, I decided to go with a bamboo top with a white finish and it looks fantastic. It has a super sleek design with a built-in drawer and charging ports for my phone or any of my other wireless devices such as my mouse or my headphones. Along with this, it has a super easy to use auto adjustment system to choose any height that you like. I'm a pretty tall guy, and this desk was still able to fit my needs from sitting down to standing up without a single issue. Transitioning between sitting and standing is completely seamless. Since I work from home and I'm in front of a desk all day, it's great to be able to stand up and stretch while working without having to be confined in a chair all the time. To top it all off, putting this thing together took like 15 minutes and was a complete breeze, and the desk feels super sturdy. 
If that sounds interesting to you, use the link in the description below to help support the channel, and thank you again to FlexiSpot for sponsoring today's video. Now back to the video. My last ditch effort was to smuggle in a silent sniper rifle, and hope there was some isolated spot I could get to without being seen and still have just enough time to hide the sniper shot and the gun after I fire. Since guards are going to swarm where I shoot from simply from hearing a noise, even if they don't realize it was a gunshot. If I can shoot Sierra's car as it's driving, it'll look like something went wrong with the car rather than it being the result of a murderer. I tried a ton of different locations, all of which I would end up getting seen at some point or another. I couldn't really get to any of the good intended sniper nests, such as on top of Robert's building or on another rooftop, as they are simply too heavily guarded. Eventually though, I managed to find a super weird spot that just barely worked. Outside the building that Robert resides in, there's a crowbar next to a back alley that provides access to rafters overlooking the race. This is generally intended to be a spot to cross the map or sneak into the building, but neither are possible with these mods active as there is a single staff member standing up here, and too many employees inside for me to even walk through the door without being seen. So you might be wondering how I could ever take a sniper shot without being seen from up here if there's employees everywhere. Well. If I take the shot normally, the staff member will turn and look at me as you would expect. But if I instead go down the stairs a little and line up my sniper scope through just a tiny gap in the railing, I can just barely snipe Sierra's car as it passes through, giving me just enough time to put the gun away before the area gets investigated. Hey, editing onion butter here. I just now realized I could have used a silenced pistol instead of a sniper since I can holster it afterwards and just walk away. I have no idea how I didn't realize that when I was filming this, but my way was way cooler, so let's all just pretend I'm not a complete moron. Alright, cool, thanks. Back to the video. I do have to take out one guard though, as he will try to investigate the sound, and to do so I simply use the coin I stole from a street performer earlier as bait, before throwing my briefcase at him and stashing him in a dumpster as soon as possible. But that leaves us with by far the most challenging target for this level for me. Robert. Robert's building is a complete fortress in this mode. I genuinely have no idea how anyone would ever get in here from my starting location without being spotted or killing a non-target. I tried every entrance I could think of, but every single one ended with me getting spotted by someone and executed on the spot. I could have chosen to spawn as a worker in the building, but that's lame. I want to sneak past all of these insane NPCs if I have the option to, rather than just spawning past their defenses. At one point, I thought I was really smart and had found a way in by sneaking up this staircase and then using the bathroom sink to bait over a guard, but without somewhere to hide the body quickly, I will always get spotted by someone. I tried again and again and again with no luck. If someone does know a way I could have done this, let me know because I for the life of me could not get in there. This left me my final option. If I can't get into Robert's fortress, I'll need Robert to leave it himself. But under these circumstances, this should have been impossible. Robert only leaves when I participate in some kind of story-based shenanigans, but these all require a disguise change as far as I'm aware, and as I established earlier, that's almost never possible. But the key word here is almost. By some insane stroke of luck, the key to this being possible is Florida Man himself. You see, there's a food stand just outside Robert's building that's run by Florida Man, and Robert absolutely loves it. But unfortunately, it's closed as Florida Man doesn't have the ingredients he needs. But if I disguise myself as the owner, I can simply open it myself. It turns out Florida Man is one of the only characters on the entire map I can knock out successfully. For some reason, he hangs out by the fishing docks, completely alone, right next to a crate. If I wait for all of the guards and people to turn around on shore, I can have just barely enough time to knock him out and dump him in the crate. Even with these settings though, the timing is still tight. A guard will come check out the noise, so I have to wait for him to leave before I can change disguises. Once I do, I reopen the stall and apparently the smell alone is enough for Robert to take notice because he immediately heads outside to eat some of my coconut balls. After waiting for a while and serving a few other hungry customers some delicious food, Robert finally arrives at the stand with his personal bodyguard. If I poison some of these coconut balls with the emetic poison I found earlier, Robert will get sick from eating them. For some reason, he doesn't care that I poisoned them in front of him, like the container literally has a picture of a dying rat on it, but I guess he thinks it's my secret ingredient or something. Considering the flies coming off of me, who can really blame him? Either way, he still has a personal bodyguard with him, so while he goes to throw up over the cliffside, I distract the guard with a coin before kicking Robert into the water. Everyone 
everyone turns around at the sound of Robert falling, but there's nothing to see except a disgusting, fly-covered Florida man. I could have just put lethal poison in the coconut balls, and considering how I look, I think that would pretty much be the expected result of eating from my stand, but I wanted to keep the theme of having no bodies found going since I presume Sierra's was lost in the explosion. With that, Robert was dead, and I had done it. Not a single one of these geniuses knew that a crime had even taken place. But I was furious. These guys tormented me with their super hearing and sight for long enough. So before leaving, I exacted my revenge until nobody in this level was left standing. I abused their super sight and hearing to lure all of them into a funnel until I was the only superhuman left in Miami, Florida, and left without anyone knowing I was there, probably. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe.